One way to calculate volumes without having to resort to three-dimensional space is to set up in two-dimensional space a function whose result gives an area. So what I mean is I have a function a of x which stands for the cross-sectional area at a given point in time. So my example is a loaf of bread. If I have a loaf of bread and I cut it near the end, the cross-sectional area or the area on the part that I cut, the flat part, is going to be smaller than is than if I had cut that piece of bread in the middle, then the flat part would have, be bigger, it would be, have a larger cross-sectional area. So this is what the idea is. If I have a function that gives me the cross-sectional area at a given point in time, then when I plot this versus x, then I'm going to get a two-dimensional graph. I, get, I have a point A, and this is going to be the cross-sectional area where the end is. And then in the middle it gets larger, and then towards the end it gets smaller again. So what happens when I integrate this? When I integrate this, I'm going to find the area under the curve and add them all up. So if I were to think of this in three-dimensional spaces, even though my information is plotted in two dimensions, so it's, it's still calculating something three-dimensional, integrating this, but it's being plotted in two-dimensional space. So what I mean is, let me say I redid this graph and I didn't want to think of it as a line. So what this function is going to give me is just some number. That is just the area. So I get x and I get some number of the area. But if I were to think of it as its true area, then it would be some shape like this. And this is kind of what would be what's going on in two-dimensional space, even though I'm trying to represent it in three dimensions, even though I'm still using two dimensions to describe it. So here is what it would be the end, and then once it gets towards the middle, it gets larger, and etc. So what I'm trying to show is when I integrate this, I find the area under the curve. So when I integrate this, it's easier to see here that what I'm actually doing when I take my delta x's and add them all up is I'm finding the volume of whatever this shape is, whether it be a piece of bread, a sphere, any kind of irregular shape that I've got, as long as I have a function that gives me an area. So when I find the area under the curve, I'm going to add, I'm going to add up all these little slices together, and then I'm going to get the total volume of whatever this shape happens to be between A and B. So it's set up like a regular problem where I have been integrating previously, but all that's really being done here that's different is saying, well, my f of x is giving me an area, and then when I integrate it, it gives me a volume. So that's the idea of this.